Hey everybody, Chris Engelbert with Engelbert Financial Advisors in Allentown, Pennsylvania with the weekly Engelbert Angle. And you can see by my slide deck behind me, bond investments are having their worst year ever. I wanna to talk to you today about why that is and also how we're taking advantage of that for our clients. So first let's get into what's going on. This is a chart of the 10 year treasury and you can see by my red arrow that interest rates at the end of the year were literally about 1.5% on the 10 year treasury. And they've zoomed recently to almost 3% on the 10 year treasury. This has been a massive move in a short period of time, mainly due to the fact that people are extremely concerned about inflation, uh, a hot inflation number is bad for bonds. But the other thing that's really what the 10 year is telling us is that the US economy is doing a lot better than what people realize. So what happens if the economy is growing, inflation is hot, interest rates are going up, the Federal Reserve has said they're gonna raise short-term rates. Now you gotta remember the Federal Reserve only controls short-term interest rates. Long-term interest rates are controlled by investors' outlooks on inflation and the U.S. economy. And you can see the massive move from 1.5% to 3% on the 10-year Treasury means that people are worried about inflation, but they still believe that the economy is also running a little bit hotter than what people realize, too. So let's talk about how bonds work, because people say, well, how can I lose money in bonds? This is our teeter-totter example that we use. So if you buy a 10-year treasury bond that's paying 2% and you hold it for 10 years, you will get your 2% or your $200 on a $10,000 investment paid to you on a yearly basis. At the end of 10 years, you will get your $10,000 back. Not bad. That's exactly how a bond works. But what people don't realize is that the bond market trades like the stock market, literally billions of dollars worth of bonds are traded every day as investors buy and sell bonds. Why do they do this? They take advantage of the changes in interest rates that are out there. So in our example here, we're showing a 2% bond, a $10,000 investment. Now, if interest rates go up, and this is where the teeter-totter idea comes into effect, if the 10-year treasury goes to 2.5%, you can see that that 2% treasury ends up trading down to about $9,000. So if you were to go out and sell your bond on the open market, you wouldn't get $10,000, you would get $9,000 for it. Now, remember, we've seen interest rates go up to almost 3% on a 10-year treasury, and a couple of months ago, a 10-year treasury was paying 1.5%. But inversely, the other thing that works out in the bond market is if interest rates go down. So if you have $10,000 in a treasury paying 2% and interest rates go down to 1.5%, you can sell your 10-year treasury at a premium or about $1,100. Now, this isn't exact. There's some other factors that go in there, but this is just a crude example that we're using to have you understand the relationship between interest rates and bonds. So if you think interest rates are going up, if you think uh, long-term interest rates on the 10-year treasury are going from 3% to 4% to 5%, you shouldn't own any long-term bonds. You should hide all of your money in a money market fund or a short-term bond fund. Because what happens is as interest rates go up, those short-term bond funds start resetting and paying a higher amount of interest. April's been a big reset for a lot of short-term bond funds. They've gone from paying a half a percent to 1%, in some cases from paying 1% to as high as 2%. But the inverse, again, is true when you're investing in the bond market. If you think interest rates are going to be stable for an extended period of time or even go down, you should do something called lengthen your duration. That's a fancy cocktail term for meaning buying longer term bonds. So if you wanna so sound smart at the next uh, uh, graduation party or outdoor barbecue, just tell everybody you're lengthening your duration on your bond portfolio and they'll be impressed. But what I wanna go back to again is this chart right here, the 10 year treasury with the big move that we've seen. Now, one of the things that happens is that all bonds are priced off of 10 year treasury, five year treasury, two year treasury. So when interest rates go up, many different categories of bonds sell off, some more than others, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the point that we want to make is that we think that interest rates have pretty much topped out for the year, that the 10-year treasury right around 3% offers a lot of value for investors. Now, remember, a couple of things. We don't think inflation this year is going to be as hot uh, as it was last year at 8, 9, 10%. We also think that the economy is going to start to cool down 
in the back half of 2022. Now remember, we're still opening up our economy, so you're got, getting a lot of these hot uh, economic numbers as businesses resupply uh, from the uh, broken supply chain that's been going on. And as uh, consumers get out and spend more money, that's what really drove up inflation last year. So we don't think inflation is going to be eight or nine percent this year. We think it's going to be low single digits. And between lower inflation numbers and a lower economic growth, we think the 10-year treasury at 3% and any of the bonds correspondingly are offering pretty good value. So uh, does that mean all bonds are bad? Again, we want to point out that many bonds, different types of bonds, high yield bonds, municipal bonds are priced off of a matrix uh, off, the uh, off the treasury uh, matrix of two-year uh, two bonds, five-year bonds, seven-year bonds, and 10-year bonds. So what happens, for example, is that when interest rates start going up and bond prices start going down, many portfolio managers just go out and many investors sell all different types of bonds. Now, we think there's some value out there. For example, mortgage bonds have been sold off viciously along with other bonds out there. And the reason being is that you know, uh, new mortgage rates are higher. But if you have a mortgage bond that's still paying three, three and a half, four percent, that's still very attractive because, again, people aren't going to stop paying their mortgage. You're investing on the other side of the mortgage bond, and those people are going to stay in their homes, pay off their mortgages, et cetera. So we think the mortgage area is uh, very ripe as far as an investment strategy right now. The other area which is really interesting is the tax-free bond area. When I first got into the business many years ago, tax-free bond rates were higher than taxable rates. Reason being is people were worried about whether a state or municipality could end up paying uh, you know, the interest on their tax-free bonds. In the last 10 years, we've seen tax-free bond rates below taxable rates. Now, most recently, with this vicious bond market sell-off, we're seeing tax-free rates above taxable bond rates. So what ends up happening with that is large pension funds are going out there and saying, hey, listen, I can buy a 10-year treasury at 3%, 3 or I can buy a 10-year municipal bond at 3.5%. Now, remember, these pension funds aren't getting any value uh, by buying a tax-free bond because pensions don't pay taxes, but they're looking at the value as far as the cash flow and rate. And we're beginning to see tax-free bond buyers uh, of different strategies come in like pension funds and buy tax-free bonds. What's another way to protect yourself uh, in a bond portfolio? It's doing something called barbelling your bond portfolio. Now, what I mean by that is obviously, if you know what a barbell is, you got to wait on each end. You do the same thing with your bond portfolio. You have half of your portfolio in short-term bonds. You have half of your portfolio in long-term bonds. Therefore, what happens is if interest rates keep on rising, you do lose money on the long portion of your bond portfolio, but interest rates keep setting higher and higher and higher on your short-term portfolio. And what you're able to do is take the cash flow from both your long-term bond portfolio and your short-term bond portfolio and reinvest it in longer-term bonds that have a higher interest rate. Now, remember, if interest rates uh, uh, go down, the long end of your bond portfolio starts to appreciate and recover and give you some capital gains, as a matter of fact. So what you really have to do is you really have to have a strategy as far as how you're operating your bond portfolio. We like the barbell strategy right now. We like municipal bonds right now. Uh, we like mortgage bonds right now. We think that if anybody has money parked in a savings account, which uh, if any of you watched my previous videos is a don't pay me any interest account, You've got to be lengthening your duration. You've got to be moving some money from some short-term bonds, such as money market funds, et cetera, into longer-term bonds to take advantage of these higher yields right now. So that's how the bond market works. We hope you got some value out of it. Uh, that's all we have for the Engelbert Angle this week, and we'll be back next week.